The governor of Fukushima has approved a plan to build facilities for radioactive waste storage in the prefecture. The central government will create two sites for material tainted by the disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Bags containing soil, vegetation, and other material contaminated by nuclear fallout continue to pile up. Without storage facilities, decontamination work throughout the prefecture will be hampered. The plan will see this waste placed at intermediate storage facilities in the towns of Futaba and Okuma. Both sites are near the crippled plant. They will hold waste for up to 30 years while the central government continues its effort to find a final disposal site. Fukushima Governor Yuhei Sato met with Environment Minister Nobuteru Ishihara and Reconstruction Minister Takumi Nemoto. He informed the ministers of his decision. It was a difficult decision to have to make the community bear the burden of hosting these facilities. But I decided that it was the quickest way to clean up the local environment. Sato also met the Prime Minister. He asked Abe to lay out detailed future plans for the prefecture's no-go zones. He also stressed the need for continued financial support to revive the local economy. Abe acknowledged the difficulty of Sato's decision and expressed appreciation. Four employees of the plant are suing Tokyo Electric Power Company for higher wages. They say their pay should reflect the risky work. This will be the first court hearing on TEPCO's treatment of workers. The four men are doing plumbing work on tanks storing radioactive water. They say their wages are too low relative to the risk of exposure to radiation. They're asking that TEPCO pay each of them about $96,000 in additional compensation. They say TEPCO raised subcontractors' wages last year by about $96 per day, but their own wages have not changed. One of the plaintiffs says he's worried about his health. We've been reluctant to complain for fear of losing our jobs. I hope this lawsuit makes it easier for everyone to speak up and receive fair payment. A lawyer representing the plaintiffs says he hopes the case sheds light on working conditions at the plant. TEPCO faces a daily challenge of securing three to 6,000 workers for decommissioning the plant. A group of Japanese lawyers says the people that run the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are going back on one of their promises to people affected by the disaster. They say Tokyo Electric Power Company officials aren't paying some of the damages proposed by government mediators. The Science Ministry established the Dispute Settlement Center in 2011. Its members mediate between TEPCO and Fukushima residents. More than 8,000 cases have been settled over the last three years. But the lawyers say TEPCO officials have recently rejected a series of settlements. They include a class action suit filed by more than 15,000 residents of a town in an evacuation zone. Lawyer Yuichi Kaido says TEPCO executives issued a business plan earlier this year promising to respect all the mediators' proposals, but he said they're not honoring that pledge. TEPCO said they will comply with the settlement proposals at first, but their current attitude is more negative. They're compounding the misery of the residents by rejecting the proposals. Kaido said the center is important for the victims of the accident who can't directly negotiate with TEPCO. Fisheries officials of Pacific Rim countries have gathered in Japan. They're discussing how to save dwindling stocks of bluefin tuna. The key issue is Japan's proposal to cut by half catches of young tuna weighing less than 30 kilograms. The population of bluefin tuna in the Pacific Ocean has plummeted to less than one-third from 20 years ago. Overfishing of young tuna is blamed. The four-day international conference in Fukuoka will address the issue. Officials from Japan, South Korea, the United States, and Taiwan will attend, along with other countries and territories, with fishing interests in the northwestern Pacific. Japan's proposal goes a step further than an agreement reached at last year's conference. That decision then was to cut catches of young bluefin tuna by at least 15 percent from the average annual haul during the three years from 2002.
the same story for food products. On Monday, Japan's food makers announced a new round of price hikes. The companies cite rising costs of raw materials. Maruha Nichiro Corporation increased its wholesale prices on 65 products, including canned salmon and crab meat, by between 5 to 33 percent. The company says higher demand for seafood is pushing up the cost of ingredients. Managers of UCC Ueshima Coffee Company say they have increased prices on seven types of high-grade coffee beans. The hikes range from 21 to 40 percent. Officials of Meg Milk Snow Brand Company say the prices of seven products, including milk, yogurt, and whipped cream, are up from 2 to 5 percent. They say the costs of raw milk for processing are on the rise. Analysts are watching to see how consumers respond to the inflation following Japan's sales tax hike on April 1st. People in western Japan are still reeling from record amounts of rain in August. The downpour caused a series of landslides in Hiroshima that left 72 people dead and two missing. As the search and cleanup continues, NHK has learned that the city's disaster warning system failed to function as expected. Waves of mud slammed into homes on August 20th, seemingly unannounced. Fire department officials received reports about the initial landslide shortly after 3.20 a.m. But an hour and a half earlier, a weather forecasting company had faxed them a warning. The message predicted torrential rains of up to 70 millimeters per hour, but none of the 14 firefighters on duty saw it. We need to investigate whether this caused a delay in the release of the evacuation advisory. The deadly landslide has also brought to light other problems with Hiroshima's disaster warning system. Dozens of sirens were set up across the city after torrential rain and landslides claimed 31 lives in 1999. Six of the sirens are located in the wards most affected by the latest disaster, but none of them were activated, even though authorities had ordered an evacuation. If you don't use the sirens for a disaster like this one, what's the point of having them in the first place? A manual compiled by the fire department says the volunteer fire brigade in each ward is in charge of operating the sirens, but it doesn't specify who is ultimately responsible for sounding the alarm. It would have been easier for the local fire brigades to use the sirens if they had received a direct order from the Hiroshima Fire Department. Fire department officials say they will study better ways of providing residents with disaster warnings. Extremely powerful storms, often called super typhoons, have caused destruction around the world. And it's extremely difficult to accurately forecast how strong a typhoon will become once it forms. But Japan's meteorological agency is trying to improve its forecasts by launching an experimental system based on seawater temperatures. Typhoon Halong brought massive amounts of rain to Japan in early August. Last November, Typhoon Haiyan devastated central regions of the Philippines, leaving more than 7,300 people dead or missing. The super typhoon gained strength as it approached the Philippines. Scientists have discovered that high temperatures in the deep sea are fueling the rapid growth of typhoons. A typhoon develops when the ocean's surface temperature rises above 26 degrees Celsius. That's because the vapor from warm seawater provides the energy needed for a storm's development. Usually, when seawater is churned up by a typhoon, its surface temperatures usually fall as cold water below mixes with the warmer water. That drop in temperature prevents the typhoon from becoming stronger. But surface temperatures are unlikely to fall when there are deep layers of warm seawater, and that allows a typhoon to become stronger. Using this research, the Meteorological Agency has started testing a new system to help scientists estimate deep sea temperatures. This chart shows the estimated temperature of seawater up to a depth of around 100 meters. The new system allows scientists to assess the spread of seawater with a temperature of at least 26 degrees Celsius. I want to improve the system to accurately forecast the intensity of typhoons to allow residents to evacuate early. 
The agency will examine the relationship between the data and the development of typhoons to improve its storm forecasting. Weather officials in Japan are tackling a huge challenge. They're trying to predict localized heavy downpours more precisely. This summer, heavy rain resulted in flooding and landslides in areas across the country. Now the officials have developed a new system to help people be more prepared for such disasters. NHK World's meteorologist Shojiro Matsuda reports. South of Tokyo in Kochi Prefecture, the accumulated rainfall exceeded 1,000 millimeters in one spell. That's more than three times the average total precipitation for August. The house was inundated in only 30 minutes. This is the first time I've experienced anything like this. And in Hiroshima, heavy rains made hillsides unstable. The landslides killed more than 70 people. Officials at the Japan Meteorological Agency developed a new rainfall forecast system in response to the changing weather patterns. The system presents the forecast of rainfall areas in more detail. The resolution is now 16 times higher. So the previous spatial resolution of one square kilometer is now split into 16 equal squares. Now it's possible to forecast precipitation by a 250 meter wide grid. The area in light green shows where rain is currently intensifying. The clouds are expected to move to an area marked in yellow in about 30 minutes. I hope people will look at the image regularly to check for heavy rain in their neighborhoods. The images are on the agency website and accessible on smartphones. A private weather forecasting company also offers services to operators of public transportation system. This railway management system displays the anticipated amount of rainfall, radar readings, and data from observation points along the tracks. The previous system sent updates every five minutes. Now it's every minute. Users can also access information on service disruptions. Downfalls raise the risk of flooded trucks and derailments. But this information helps railway operators prepare for possible disasters. Our company regulates train operation according to the rainfall and wind speed. In uh, bad weather like heavy rain and storm, our operating headquarters decides the operating plan according to the weather information. Japanese weather information services are becoming more precise, but the more detailed their zoning is, the higher the risk of their forecasts being wrong if they misjudge the cause of the rain clouds. It's very difficult to predict when and where rainfall will occur, so we quickly observe the latest rainfall and forecast precipitation areas by predicting its route. The predictions may be off at times. Typhoons and the autumn seasonal rainfall are expected to cause isolated downfalls in many areas in the coming weeks. Officials with the Japan Meteorological Agency hope people will keep track of heavy rain forecasts in neighboring areas to be fully prepared against disasters.